Hello everyone, Maurice Singh here. Welcome to Tings Invest, where we're going to be talking about investing, finance, and professional development. For today's video is for entertainment purposes only. What we're going to be talking about today, we're going to be talking about NEO stock, ticker NIO. I'm going to be giving you guys my observations and some of the insights I've been noticing so far with respect to a NEO stock performance in the last couple of weeks. And also going to give you guys my insights to explain what's been experiencing this downward trend movement for the stock. Uh, some of the macro and some of the microeconomical drivers that's been tr causing this sell-off so far. I'm also going to give you guys my technical analysis uh, to talk about what's the best entry price point for us to get into the stock at the moment. And lastly, as a bonus, I'm going to give you guys my price predictions, uh, my price target uh, for the end of the year 2021 as well. So stick around, uh, stay tuned, and let's go make some money. For those that are new to this channel, my name is Maurice Ain. I am a former Wall Street investment banker, JP Morgan, and subsequently a private equity investor for about half a decade, and most recently a tech executive at a Silicon Valley based technology company. Uh, so it's basically spent about a decade of my life on both the finance side on Wall Street and then also on the operational side on the Silicon Valley technology company. And now I come here on YouTube, try to utilize the experience and the knowledge that I've acquired over time uh, to provide value and provide knowledge to, you know, to my viewers and people around the world uh, to you know, reach that financial freedom that we're all striving for. What I'm asking for you guys to do is to hit that like button below, that subscribe button below, and the little bell notification as well, uh, you know, to you know to get notified when I'm posting. I plan on posting quite frequently, uh, about two to four times a week. Um, it helps me. It helps with my initiative, and most importantly, helps with you know people around the world. You know, so we can all rise together successfully and financially. All right, so just look at the daily chart for Neo right now. Um, you can see that ever since the morning we were at the level of 370304 level and then after the clock opens uh, we just sold off completely all the way down to the bottom right here at about 10 o'clock and we bounced back uh, subsequently from that 3508 level and I bought some shares about at around like 3517 level I bought about like a thousand 500 shares today. Um, I saw that was a very attractive price point for me to get into, so I de definitely want to buy more to dollar cost average. Something to notice here is that the 10 a.m. level is always a good reversal point for for uh, a lot of the East Coaster or like the you know Pacific Air. If you wake up really early uh, to grab shares, you know this is a very uh, common um, uh, momentum that you see for a lot of stocks it typically sells off in the morning and then 10 o'clock people will start buying in and ever since then it start consolidating up and down up and down but you could see that the consolidation is more of a downward movement so it's definitely a, a down day today with a low volume as you can see and also uh the momentum has been kind of you know selling more of like a selling type of day you could see that the rsi has been going more of a downward trend to the 30 level um, and uh, you can see that the MACD has been crossing down as well. So it's been definitely a bearish day uh, in the early part of the morning. And then you can see that it continues to sell off up until like noon time, uh, around like 1 o'clock, 12 p.m. Eastern time or 9, 9 o'clock uh, Pacific time when most of the, you know, the 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 west coaster uh, uh are you know wakes up and start buying in uh and you could see that that slowly brought back up so you definitely see a lot of people buying in around noon time and then it went up from 3456 level which was the bottom today all the way to uh at one point about in the middle of 3581 which was something that we saw around like you know, uh, later in the morning uh, uh, of today. And then ever since then, consolidate and then so slowly sold off a little bit by 3, 3 p.m. And before the market closed, we closed on uh, 3566 level today, which is, you know, it's, a, it's like a down day, uh, definitely a bloody day, not, not something that, you know, we, we like, we look for. But that's something I appreciate because, like, that gave me a good opportunity to, you know, dollar cost average and buy more stocks that I think this company has a great fundamental on. So I want to talk about what's going on, right? What's been causing this whole sell-off, right? You know, it's been frustrating for a lot of investors, like including me, and I'm sure including you as well. That's why you're watching this video. It's like, 
what the hell has been driving this whole EV sell off, right? Like, what's what's causing Neo to to go down? Like, ever since that forty dollar resistance level, we've been just selling off ever since, right? From the forty level, and then we hit the thirty seven consolidate. Now we're at the thirty five level, and we saw like thirty four fifty six today. So what the hell is happening with with this whole downtrend, right? I took some time to boil down all my collective thoughts and um and my insights based on my observation that I've been seeing so far. And it really boils down to four fundamental factors, right? And the factors are combined a combination of both macroeconomically driven and microeconomically driven. And the four bullet points that you see in front of you is really ranked from the most macro driven all the way all the way to the most micro driven. Okay, so starting from the first one, um, monetary policies. Okay, so there's been a lot of media affectations and publication that's been um, indicating to investors or people that are reading the news that there's going to be some monetary policy tightening among the you know between the U.S. and the Chinese government uh, for a lot of the exports and imports, right? And if that happens, that can you know subsequently squeeze a lot of the profit margins among various different companies that do trades with China. And knowing the fact that Neo, Xpeng, and Li, uh, these companies, you know, or other, uh, not just EV companies, but other Chinese companies are, you know, have such large Chinese exposure, right? And Neo, I, I know, as we know, have a, you know, the Chinese government backs this company specifically, and the majority of the business is really driven in China at the moment, right? And they're slowly expanding globally at the moment right now. Um, and if this happens, this can subsequently affect um, how U.S. investors are, you know, perceiving uh, Neo right as an investment opportunity, and subsequently this can hinder uh, the profitability and the growth uh, that Neo has, you know, projected for us that they they expect they plan to expand globally, and especially into the U.S. market as well, right? So, but I foresee this not going to be uh, not going to be happening. The likelihood of, of this, like to have a huge, you know, seismic effect that can be detrimental to Neo as a whole in terms of his business fundamental, in terms of his financial performance going forward, in terms of his explosive growth trajectory that we're going to be foreseeing going forward with this whole green evolutions that we're foreseeing. Um, the likelihood of that to be a detriment would be unlikely, would be a very low in my, in terms of my risk spectrum. But that's something that we need to look out for, obviously. But nothing that you know is gonna keep me up at night or like make me super fearful about you know putting my money into a neo stock, right? So that's number one. Number two is the global chip shortage, right? And this is something that we've been you know experiencing for the last couple weeks, uh, I think a couple months now in in the entire Q1, ever since the whole sell off, uh, in combinations of the whole. Uh, sector rotations and all the, also the 10-year treasury yield but the global chip shortage is also another negative catalyst that causes this uh, whole sell-off right um this is obviously going to have some correlations to the supply and the productions of these ev vehicles going forward that subsequently can have negative correlations to the financial performance going forward however um you know this is gonna correct itself or you know over time right i think these ev these uh, chip companies they are aware of the shortage right they are aware of the supply issues that they are currently experiencing right now right and i think they are gonna double down and they are gonna put extra effort into uh you know making sure that they are able to sustain the supplies for these ev companies going forward to you know to capture this uh this macro boom going forward right uh, so I think over time, this is going to slowly correct itself. And eventually, I think some sort of like media expectations or publication is going to come out and they're going to say something like, oh, there's a huge backlog for these um, demand for these for these uh, EV vehicles. But supply is currently, you know, back and running uh, and they're putting double effort in terms of the productions and they're going to foresee a lot of um, good growth going forward. So over time, this is going to self-correct itself. But right now, obviously, it's a, it's a negative catalyst causing investors to be fearful, right? And because this can have a lot of negative correlations to a lot of different other factors and in, into the business fundamental uh, as a whole. You know, uh, uh, this is uh, one of the, the glues that, that holds the whole model together uh, and, and how the model is going to be sustained going forward. So when the glue is running out, 
you know, and I'm using this analogy, using this glue, you know, which is the basis of building these vehicles, runs out, this can have a negative effect, right? But again, this is more of a temporary negative affectation rather than a long-term um, business fundamental affectation. So something to look out for, but nothing to, you know, again, majorly worry, right? So in terms of the risk spectrum, I put this on a relatively lower level. Uh, I think this is a great opportunity. It provides us a great opportunity to buy the stocks right now rather than, you know, seeing this as like a huge detriment in a long-term perspective. Okay, so thirdly, with respect to the stock rotations, right, that we've been seeing, um, you can see that a lot of investment managers, a lot of hedge fund managers, including some, you know, uh, regular investors, some retail investors has been shifting some of their growth stocks, you know, uh, you know, or small cap stocks to more large cap stocks or value stocks, if you may, you know, aka the recovery stocks, right? I'm aware, you know, the COVID situation is still currently, um, you know, we're still in, you know, in the midst of it right now. Um, but there is some, you know, we are slowly seeing the lights at the end of the tunnel. We are slowly reviving and coming back, you know, to the normal economy going forward. Um, you know, I know some countries are more severe and, and, you know, have a little bit more serious situation compared to other countries, but we are trending in the positive directions, I would say overall. And as a strategic move for a lot of investors, it makes sense to slowly allocate, you know, their holdings into more value-based stocks or, you know, stocks that are poised for recovery going forward, right? And I think this sell-off is, um, is not really has anything to do fundamentally to these EV stocks or these EV companies as a whole. It's just that, you know, it, 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 it's, it's time to take some profit, right? We have already experienced a significant growth in Q3 and Q4 last year. We saw that huge run up, right? From when Neil was like at $15, ran up all the way to close to like $60, right? That's a huge gain in, in, in less than a year in like close to like just four or five months, right? And it just makes sense to take a breather nowadays, right? So I see this as like a healthy correction, a healthy sell-off, as a form of a rotations and also some of the macroeconomic factors that we have to identify so far, which causes this sell off, right? So eventually, I foresee my prediction is that, um, you know, these large cap stocks and these value stocks, yes, they are, you know, a strategic play for these investors right now. However, uh, eventually, they'll realize that, you know, these, these stocks are you know, the growth threshold has already hit a certain point, right? You're not going to see like 30% gains in a year in, in comparison to like these EV stocks or like Mio, right? Um, you don't, you're not going to see Amazon growing like 30% year over year or like, I don't know, Google growing like 45% year over year like that, right? They're going to slowly, you know, take away from these recovery stocks as we go back to the normal economy and you will see another, uh, rotation coming and I foresee that rotation to happen sometimes in maybe in mid Q3 or uh, early Q3 possibly or even late Q Q2 and you're gonna see another bull run for these growth stocks going forward as we come back to the economy as we come back you know uh, working in the office space again okay um, and we'll continue that bull run all the way to the end of this year all the way until the Santa Claus rally uh, by December uh, and then in 2022, we'll, we'll see how that happens. But for me, for now, I think that's a, a very logical forecast and a very logical uh, strategic uh, allocation uh, for these investors now. Lastly is the Coinbase IPO and the Kathy Wood effects that I have defined here. And just take a look at the chart right here. Um, let me pull the chart real quick. Just looking at the... Kathy Wood uh, on Lucid Beta, which is something that I use to look at Kathy's uh, ARK Invest holdings every single day. I think optically speaking, Kathy definitely sold uh, you know a large amount of Tesla shares, 150, uh, close to 150 million dollars worth of Tesla at 202 thousand shares of Tesla. It's you know a good amount, you know, or a large amount compared to like a common investors like you and I, right? However, you know, you can see that she also sold like PayPal, Team, Intuit, you know, obviously not as large as Tesla, but she wanted to buy a lot of Coinbase, right, on IPO. Um, 
and I, I and and hear me out on this rationale here. I believe that she probably understand that you know she probably bought the company at a premium, right? But optically speaking, Kathy has to make a point to Wall Street, has to make a point to the public, right? Investors that you know she's been a strong bull for Bitcoin, for Coinbase, for Ethereum, and the whole sector, right? She's been publishing like thesis publications on pushing this, right? So this state, this uh, investments of two hundred forty six million or seven hundred fifty thousand shares of Coinbase is an optic affectation that she wants to project to the media, to the world, right? Um, that she's supportive of this whole trend going forward, this whole you know revolution of cryptocurrency exchange going forward, right? Right. I don't know, you know, the the you could think you could say that Coinbase is currently overvalued or undervalued, but she bought this, you know, not purely because it's a good price point for for us to get into, but it's just because she wants to. It it, it just makes sense for her as a as a as a businesswoman. It just makes sense for her as a as a you know as a media figure, right? Because I would be, you know, it would be questionable if she didn't. To be honest, right? Because Coinbase is one of the uh, the 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 core player in in the cryptocurrency exchange market right now, and she's been pushing this. She's been bullish on this. Um, so investing in you know two hundred forty six million dollars is a lot of money. But Kathy is invested. You know her current asset under management right now is at billions, right? Like forty billion dollars. So Coinbase is a large chunk of dollars that she invested in. But relatively speaking, it's still a small chunk of her large amount of assets that she's currently managing, right? Same thing for Tesla for the amount that she sold, right? So I wouldn't read too much into it. Um, and if I was you, if I was you know to think about investing in Coinbase, I wouldn't just purely follow um, Kathy on this, right? So I feel like I'm going off tangent a little bit. Right, so going back to my point about Neo, right? The reason, the another reason for the Neo sell-off that I was talking about here is that because of the fact that Neo has such a strong correlations to Tesla, you know, knowing that fact that they're both on in the EV sector, that um, investors want to basically liquidate their holdings into more of their short cap or growth stocks, right? To Invest into Coinbase, right? So yesterday we saw a lot of like shake off um, or uh, stock out reallocations or rotations from you know uh, the investors holding, and I, I think that you know a lot of the EV stocks, you know, or that are in the small cap sector, are the ones that most investors decide to sell off um, to buy into the Coinbase IPO. You know, which subsequently drove this sell-off, right? Uh, uh, you know, so overall, these are mostly just rotational movement with some macroeconomical aff affectations. But overall, again, right, this has nothing to do with really the business fundamentals. Nothing really has to do with the value proposition that Neil or Xpeng or Lee or Tesla are still doing, right? We're still trending in that growth momentum going forward. We are still trending in a, in the green energy evolution going forward. So I wouldn't worry too much about it, right? I think the Coinbase IPO there was a temporary momentum affectation that causes some you know sell off that shook off some you know investors that that wants wants to make a quick buck. But the ones that truly understand the value proposition of the growth of NEO going forward are the ones that are going to get rewarded royally going forward. So look at the technical analysis for NEO, uh, ticker NIO. You can see that ever since last year, we've been uh, basically rallying up all the way from 1675 all the way to the $56 level and then consolidate and go went all the way up to that euphoric pump again to $67 level and then ever since then we sold off completely from the top all the way to the bottom at $31 level and right now we've been basically consolidated you know uh, for weeks now ever since um, March 
uh, March 8th, so we've been consolidated for like f uh, three, four weeks so far, and uh, four, five weeks now. And uh, we went back, bounced back up a little bit, and then right now we are in this consolidated trend right now. And you can see that we're slowly forming this double bottom at the moment. Um, look at the RSI right now, we are close to that oversold area um, on a daily chart. And you can see that um, right now the MACD is crossed, but it looks like it's slowly looking like it's about to cross again to a downward. So which, you know, uh, is projecting some downward movement from here. So my projection uh, for here going forward would be we're going to consider the trade sideways uh, up until sometimes in May. And I believe the earnings is sometimes on uh, May 24th or May 27th. Uh, please correct me if I'm mistaken. But sometimes later. But we still have some room to go, right? Because it's only April. We're we only in mid-April right now. So we have still, sub, still have like a couple weeks left for us to go. And contingent on no like, you know, strong catalyst um, or publication or news that comes out that you know that are bullish news uh, for Neo I foresee us to consider trade sideways from here and then by I think sometimes starting in May I think the first week of the second week of May will slowly rally back up but right now I do foresee that we, we, we are gonna see some more bearish movement downward all the way down to uh, I believe the $32 level um, the 3391 level uh, if we even have a more severe crash because of some negative media uh, affectation we might even hit that $31 level going forward but sometimes um, in uh, in in early May or first week of May we are gonna see that rally going back up and I think we are gonna go back up to some somewhere around the 43 $44 level and then eventually gonna keep going pumping up uh, contingent on the chip shortage and then and that all the macroeconomical factors that we just talked about earlier today um, that we are gonna go back into this uh, bullish rally of this all-time high of 45 46 dollars level all the way pushing all-time high by Santa Claus rally uh, sometimes in Q4 to hit that all-time highs of like 85 or even $90 per share is going forward. Uh, right now, I think it's, a, it's an optimal price point for you to get in right now. The RSI is definitely low. I, I don't foresee us to further breach that. You know, for us to breach that, it will be very unlikely. It will probably take some major s s black swan events or something seismic for us to go further down. But uh, this is definitely a resistance level at that $30 level. Uh, it's definitely a strong uh, psychological level for us to look out for. That right now, I think uh, if we were to be able to buy in that somewhere around like 32, 33 right now, I, I would you know feel very good at you know dollar cost averaging. If we ever hit that thirty dollar level, uh, you know which I don't foresee that to happen. You know I think that's a very strong resistance level. Uh, but if we do, we will go all the way back down to the $25, $26 level, $27 level right here, which uh, the likelihood of that happening, uh, I would say highly unlikely, knowing the fact that we are already oversold um, you know, on, on, on this chart right here. Look at the Wall Street uh, analyst rating consensus right here. You can see that out of the nine analysts, uh, you can see that a uh, six buy three hold so far with uh, a sixty two dollars uh, of a uh, average price target uh, with a seventy four percent upside from here. You could see that in twelve months forecast eighty one dollars uh, as a high projections. Low would be thirty eight eighty, and I know that currently we are trading at uh, a, you know a thirty five sixty six as of today, uh, which is lower than actually our low expectations on Wall Street. So still, uh, still some room for us to go, and I don't foresee us to stay around this level. I think this is uh, pretty unrealistic, to be honest. I think somewhere around like the 80s, uh, 85 level by the end of the year is very, very logical uh, with the growth and the trajectory that the company is already pushing. Looking at the some of the institutional ownership, you could see that uh, you know despite the whole sell-off so far, a lot of investors have been investing in into NEO, you could see that uh, stuff like 4.15, uh, which is today, you could see that uh, DNB Asset Management bought 35, 
closest 36,000 shares of, of, of NEO uh, at $1.4 million, McDonald's partner, 6,000 shares. You can see that NEO has been uh, pretty popular stocks among a lot of asset managers and hedge funds, uh, basically being bought up every single day. Uh, no one has really sold so far. Uh, and they buy you know, pretty substantial amounts. You know, you can see uh, 3.5 million shares. Uh, Noge Bank bought 14.7 million shares. You can see that you know the the amount of dollars that's being thrown into this stock is pretty substantial. So, which gives you you know great comfort into um, you know that a lot of investors really believe in these stocks. Um, you know, in comparison to you know people that are more bearish, you can see that the outflow definitely the inflow definitely outweighs the outflow uh, significantly. So just look at the number in the more simplistic perspective. Currently, as you know, we're trading at about like 35.50 and I'm just rounding up the numbers. I know the exact number is like more like 35.66 at the moment uh, as of market close. Uh, but I think it's a fair price for us to get into at the moment. Uh, if we ever get down to the to the level of 34.50, which I know that we did today, I actually grabbed up a lot of shares uh, and I actually bought a thousand uh, 500 shares today of NEO, um, and I, I think my cost average right now is uh, it's about 2874. Uh, if I'm not mistaken, I'm holding about like 7500 shares of NEO at the moment. Uh, so I'm gonna keep buying, keep buying until um, I build up to that tens out ten thousand dollar ten thousand shares uh, as, uh, as my goal that I, I'm trying to hit by end of this year. And if we ever get down to that 3250 level um, or that black swan event uh, occasion that happens sometimes in early March, uh, if we ever get below that, I think that's a complete steal. I, I think that's uh, that's completely oversold. Um, and I, I would you know really, really load up if we ever hit that to that level, even maybe build up more than 10,000 shares for me. Uh, and for me, the price target here is eighty-five dollars per shares uh, by end of year twenty twenty-one. And you know, if we compare that to the current price point, that's uh, about one hundred and thirty-nine, one hundred forty percent upside, or two point four, two point five times your money from here in a year. And I think that's a really, really great um, projections from here. And I think that's a really great return from here as well so uh, hopefully you guys learned something about neo uh, about my perspective some of the insights and research that i've been doing as well uh, please you know again hit the like button the subscribe button and that notification below as well uh, i plan on posting more videos frequently i think again two to four times a week or even more now i truly enjoy doing this i truly enjoy speaking to you guys and i hope that you guys find this helpful uh you know feel free to you know directly message me or uh, you know, reach out to me if you have any questions uh, or any stocks you would like to see specifically to get my insights on. Um, so thank you again. Stay tuned and uh, let's make some money together. Take care.